Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to transform your interior from this into this. So this is a kit that I decided to go with. It's called Silver Holders. And as you can see, these LED strips are extremely thin. I think they're less than a millimeter thin. And you get six strips standard. You can order more if you need, but it's four for the doors, one really long one for the main dash part, and one really short one for the left side of the dash. These are the footwell lights. I opted for them. You can also get the kit without them if you don't like them. And then it comes with these controllers as well. So there's four sub controllers and one main controller. This is the rest of the wiring and your other lights. So the lights for your storage bins and for your door handles. So the main idea of this kit is that the LED strips are so thin that they'll fit in between these gaps on your door card and your front dash. And then when the lights are off, they'll pretty much be invisible. And it's the exact same thing for the front dash. It gets pushed in between the trim pieces. And you can see it's just a little white line that goes across. It's pretty much invisible. All right, so this is the main controller. This actually controls everything. It connects to all of the sub controllers. So this has to be in the central area of the car. So this is the wiring harness for your main controller. It has a few extra wires on it. Um, it obviously still has your power and ground, but it also has the speaker connector on it. The speaker is really weird. It says like, yes master and stuff like that. So I probably wouldn't recommend using it, but if you want, you can go ahead and use it. So the best power source for my main controller I could find was the cigarette lighter right here. So it has power when the car is on or when the ignition is on. And to get to it, you just have to remove these trim pieces. So I always recommend soldering your wires together, but if you don't know how to solder, you can use these tap connectors. So essentially you slip the two wires through, the ones that you want to connect electrically, and you push down on this metal clip thing. So it, when you push it down, it pierces through the insulation on the wires and connects them electrically. So this is the wiring harness for the cigarette lighter that I was talking about. As you can see, this has three wires instead of just two wires. The white wire is actually for the ambient lighting that goes around the cigarette lighter. So if you would want your ambient lighting to turn on and off with your headlights, you can tap into that white wire. But if you want them to be on in the morning as well, you just tap into that red wire. Now I've soldered the two wiring harnesses together. So once I plug it in to the main controller, I should be able to get power to it. So I have everything connected. Let's see if it lights up. And there you go. So now that we have our main control module hooked up to power, we can get this trim piece off so we can run our strip. So just pry it off gently and it pops right out. So now we need to figure out where to put our main control module. So it needs to be somewhere where all the wires can reach to and somewhere that's not going to move around too much. So I think the best place is right about here. It fits in there snug and all the wires can reach to it easily. Also included in this kit is an extension cable. So this cable is so that you can send power to that piece that goes to the left of your dash. It's just a female connector and it connects to the LED strip. So this strip will be sitting on our dash something like this. You're most likely going to have to cut down some of your LED strips to length. So just measure them out, grab a pair of scissors or some wire snippers, and you can cut them to length anywhere along the strip. These are a little different from traditional LEDs in that the old ones usually have marks on them where you can cut them, but these ones you can cut pretty much anywhere without any issues. So I got the left strip in and check out how cool it looks. Now moving on to the actual footwell lights. So this is going to be a little trickier to install. We're going to have to run them down under the dash to the footwells and also under the seats. 
So I'm going to start off with the main controller. So I'm going to wire them in, plug them in, and then I'm just going to kind of pull them through. The best way I found to get the FOA lights down from the main controller was by using this little claw thing. So I just put it through, hooked it on, and yanked them out. The kit comes with double-sided tape that you use to put these footwell lights on. So I'm just going to stick them to the panel right beside the OEM lights. And the same thing on the passenger side. Alright, perfect. So I got this strip installed up here. And I also installed another smaller one down here. So let's turn it on and see what it looks like. Check that out. You can see this one's more subtle, but it's still there. You can see it reflecting off the drawer thing. And look at that, it looks really clean. So now moving on to the lights for the doors. So the first thing we have to do is remove this door panel. There is a bolt behind this cover here. And there's also one on the right side that's also covered. So you just have to pop that cover off and it's a Phillips head. Then once you have those two screws out, you can pop a trim tool down underneath and you can try to pop out these clips. So you might have to work around it for a bit, but once you find a sweet spot, it'll pop right out just like that. And once the door panel is off, we can take a closer look at the wiring that's already behind the door. So this car came from factory with ambient lighting. It's really bad, you can barely see it, but it is there. So this is a little LED that connects to the fiber optic piece that's on the actual door card that reflects the light. So this is what's inside of this little case here. It's literally just an LED with a resistor on it. So this has power but i don't know how much so let's test it so turning the ignition on we can see that it lights up and then grabbing a multimeter we can see that it has 12 volts as well so this is perfect for our power source so the cool thing about this kit is that the sub controller connects wirelessly to the main controller so you don't need any additional wires you only need a power and a ground so i've got this hooked up to power and ground let's see if it turns on Perfect, check that out. All right, so now comes the scary part. We have to drill a hole into our door panel. So this is so we can run our wires through for our LED strip. Be careful when you're doing this. So I'm starting off with a very small drill bit. We want to see where our LED strip is gonna end at. So just line it up on our door card and you can see that there's this little heat shrunk part that kind of sticks out so we want to keep it at least one centimeter from the edge so it doesn't stick out so i'm just going to put it right about here and we can start drilling So as you guys saw, we drilled a very, very small hole and this connector is not going to fit through that. So we're going to have to de-pin this actual connector and get the wires through individually. So de-pinning the connector isn't as scary as it sounds. You just get a pick, push down on the little metal tab and the wire comes right out. And then once it's de-pinned, you can tie it onto a wire tie and just pull it right through. Once all three wires are in, you can pull the rest of the cable through. And now comes the difficult part. So getting the actual LED strip in between this gap, you kind of have to pry the door card open, make the gap a little bigger so you can fit it in, even though it's really thin. Some cars, it's gonna be easier, but on this car, it was pretty difficult. It took a lot of force to get it in. Now we can repin the connector. So take note of the way that the wires went before you took them out. In my case, they go black, green, red. So the green's in the middle. And then you kind of just push it in until it clips. After you give it a good tug and it doesn't come out, you're done. So here's a better view of the hole that I drilled. As you can see, it's really small. It's literally just the perfect size. And the connector is much, much bigger. It's probably like six or seven times bigger. So if you wanted to get it through, you can see how big the hole would have had to been in order to get it through. So there we have it. The strip is in. And you can see on the end, that little heat shrunk part that I was talking about so I'm just going to push it in a little bit more so it's not as visible so you just use like a card or something like that to do this part but once it's in you can see it's nearly invisible so I'm going to get it plugged in and let's see what it looks like
And there you go, check that out. So the light is extremely smooth and it's even. So now all we have to do is take care of the door handle lights. So a little light down here and also one in the storage bin. So I was thinking to put it back here so it doesn't shine in your eyes while you're driving. So the door handle from factory comes with ambient lighting in it. As you can see, it has this little plastic piece and the light just diffuses through there and it clips right into the door handle. So I was thinking I could just grab this new LED, take off that outer case and just, I guess, glue that or epoxy that in here so that the light would go through the factory ambient lighting area. That way I wouldn't have to drill another hole and it would just be an overall cleaner install. So this is what the door handle light will look like when it's on. It will just be a nice glow. It wouldn't be too in your face. So this is what it should look like after you epoxy that board onto the clip thing. So make sure the LED is lined up perfectly in the middle of that hole. Now moving on to the storage bin light. So it's just this thing, it kind of diffuses the light out. So we're gonna have to drill a hole somewhere about here. Would probably be ideal. So as you can see, I got the hole drilled in and I pushed that little plastic piece through. On the back side, you can see it's sticking out through the door card. That's where the actual LED module is gonna to attach to. So you just push it in and it holds. And then we can grab our wire and figure out where we need to put our sub controller. So everything's hooked back up. I just got some double sided tape to put the module right there. It sticks in there pretty nicely. And then now we can get our door panel back together and we can see what it looks like. And guys, check that out. Look how good it looks. So you can kind of see that light in the door handle, but it's kind of difficult to see because the other light overpowers it. We can also see that light that's in the storage area. So the back door is very similar to the front, but instead there's a screw here and one up here instead of that one bolt. And once you have those out, you can just grab your trim tool and pop it out. Again, it might take some force, but it will come out. There we go. And perfect. So with our door panel off, we can look at our wiring harness and it has the exact same ambient lighting thing as our front door. So we're going to use power from that. If you don't have that, you can also use the power from the window switch. So in most cars, the window switch has a little light in it too that turns on at night. And you just have to test these pins to see which one has power and you can just use that for your sub controller. And then we can get our hole drilled for the wiring. Perfect. So here's a better view of how to de-pin your connector. So you just put your pick in, push down on that little metal tab, and then the wire comes right out. Just like that. So I'd recommend that you epoxy this before you start working on the other parts, just so it has enough time to dry. And then as you can see, the LED is perfectly lined up with that hole there. And once it's dry, we can get it clipped back in. Just clips in like that and then here you can see it's just like factory and the rest is pretty much identical to the front door so I just kind of put it back together so as you can see I pushed that little heat shrunk part in you can see that door and handle light right here and then also that storage area light and with the power of editing I'm also done the passenger side so check that out it looks so good And you can see the rest, and it all just kind of flows together. And there you guys have it. That's how you install custom ambient lighting in your car at home. So if this is the first video you're catching of mine, please consider subscribing. And if you feel like you've learned something new or interesting, please drop a like and comment down below. I'll see you guys in the next one.